Three Wise Radio. Hey, Mikey, he likes it. All right, ready, guys? Hold on, somebody buzzed, and it's probably not for me because I didn't order anything. <laughs> so what did you uh, what'd you get while you're sitting there? I got a McDouble and a, some fries and a drink. Beautiful. Describing what? Oh, uh, just they keep, this customer keeps or this employee keeps walking by and just like stink eyeing me the whole time. It's like, what do you oh, want? Leave me alone. Fuck off. It's, it's probably because you are sitting at a McDonald's for like an hour doing a podcast. <laughs> Maybe. I. Who's I'm to like, say? We're in the corner right now. Hey, it's a hot spot right now. Let's at go. some point, Garrett, if somebody walks by and gives you more stink eye, I would just say, "All right, you want me to buy a fucking McFlurry? Fine, buy me another half hour." I think that might be a problem. I mean, I've got, I've got food here. So now, all right, here we go. <laughs> Welcome to Three Wise Radio, a podcast where we talk about movies, video games, comic books, TV, technology, the internet, and pretty much everything else media related. My name is Joe Greller. I am joined as usual by Garrett Welker and Sam Pixley. How are you this week, guys? Sam is in Chicago. I am in St. Louis, and Garrett is broadcasting live from a McDonald's in Troy, Missouri, on location. Yes, man. I was trying to. I was gonna. I was gonna pull a Joe and just like, oh, well, I'm on. Uh, I'm in Themyscira today or something. You know. Like, I was. I was gonna say that we were each on different underwater platforms uh, or submarines man. based on our topic of discussion for the day. Yes, we'll be uh, doing animal attacks because of the new shark movie coming out 47 meters down, I believe is what it is. It looks good. Certainly not up. (laughs) No, no. (laughs) And then we'll be talking a little bit about uh, piracy and internet access as well on today's show. But let's get into some headlines, starting with, well, Game of Thrones may have already leaked the actual name of Jon Snow. In a Reddit post, a leaked image from next month's Empire Magazine featuring an interview with Isaac Hempstead, Wright, who plays Bran on the show, uh, apparently he let slip the actual name of Jon Snow, and I cannot pronounce this first name, but it's like Jaharisi Targaryen, or something along. Jaharis. Jaharis. There's an S at the end. Jaharis Jaharis Targaryen. Jaharis Targaryen. There you go. Oh, wouldn't it be best, better if it was just John Targaryen? (laughs) That would be better, Yes. That actually would be the a lot The laziest better. slash best writing ever. Yeah. Well, everyone oh, kind of right. knew this was coming. So is this even news? Like, I don't watch Game of Thrones, so I don't know how well of a kept secret this was supposed to be. I thought everyone already kind of speculated that he was a Targaryen, and maybe it was already said that he was. Oh, no. It, 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 was, it was definitely already confirmed and everything, but I don't think that... Uh, I think every, everyone thought he was just going to stick with the name John. Gotcha. They he wasn't going to actually have another name. Yeah. Technically, they have not confirmed that he is a Targaryen. Oh, True. really? Well, in the so in the show they do the big reveal is that and it's what we've all known for a long time just because it's it's easy to put the clues together, but they show Bran who's the kid that released the info. He hears the his mom, Jon Snow's mom whispering to his dad or his his actual his not real dad. <laughs> Like, oh, you got to protect him because if John, if he finds out, he's going to kill him. And then she whispers something, and you don't hear it, and then they superimpose the baby's face on Jon Snow's face. So technically, he could just be any, just a guy. Okay. They could show a scene after this where his dad goes and sleeps with a hooker <laughs> and has Jon Snow. Right, Garrett? Yes. That's at least what my fan fiction is, is about. All right. In other news, a uh, little bit of interesting actual news. Leonardo DiCaprio apparently has Marlon Brando's Oscar. Why? Why? Who, exactly. Who the heck knows? He didn't have his own? At, at, at so first. Long? Well, originally, yes. He got it for Wolf of Wall Street originally. <clears throat> uh, the 42-year-old actor who won an Academy Award in The Reverend this past year uh, was gifted the statue a few years ago by a production company called Red Granite, who helped finance the film Wolf of Wall Street. And they passed on. They had Brando's, from when he died, his Oscar, and they passed it on to DiCaprio at the time. But now what's funny is on Thursday, the U.S. Attorney's Office and Munder Money Laundering and Asset Recovery Section started to seize all the assets of the former production company that was Red Granite. And <laughs> in that includes Brando's Oscar. So now that DiCaprio has his own, I guess it's very easy to give up. He's like, they need that Oscar as well for evidence on everything that the company has accumulated while money laundering and when they've done their schemes. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's okay. That's so wildly appropriate. 
other based, as- oh, yeah. based on Wolf of Wall Street yeah. and how all that like it's it's almost scripted. <laughs> I like I wouldn't be surprised if a Wolf of Wall Street deluxe DVD was about to come out. <laughs> and this is all a ploy. And this is some deep some deep web viral marketing. It's a possibility. But there are other assets being acquired as well, or I guess seized. Uh, a Picasso painting purchased for $3.2 million is also being seized. And wow. a uh, Jean-Michael Basquet collage. That, Basquiat. Basquet, thank you. Um, Basquiat. 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 Yeah. Who is he? Like, say biscuit, but fancy. Jean-Michael <laughs> Biscuit's collage is being purchased for, or it's also, that was purchased for $9.1 million, and that's being seized as well. So, yeah. it's not just the Oscar. Does an Oscar have value other than, I mean, is it just that Marlon Brando, it's his Oscar? Or, because I feel like I get it, a, like a painting or things like that, those have value in the same way that I guess an Oscar does, because it's a certain person's, but I feel like a, a Picasso painting versus a Marlon Brando Oscar is like not even close in comparison. And, are Oscars, what are they made of? They're made of gold. Solid? Yes. Solid gold? Yeah, to a certain, I think they weigh like 14 pounds or something. They're, they're a little bit, or maybe 10 they're pounds. They're, they're, they're heavy. Okay. Like you could, you well, could do I, some damage if you hit someone upside the head with one. I know they're heavy because every single actor or actress that's ever won one is going, oh, it's so, oh, it's heavier than I thought it'd be. It's like, no, it's not. <laughs> it has like a little bit of, I, what are they? I think it's in the thousands, but it's not much, but it's it's worth at least like it does have monetary value i think it's got like five figures attached to it so it's nothing compared to what the other ones are doing but they just need it based on all the transactions that they have to look at what this company bought what they gave out and everything else yeah yeah no it makes it makes sense but they're not they're not repoing it for the financial value of it uh the statuettes were initially gold-plated solid bronze but then that was abandoned for a britannia metal a pewter-like alloy which is then plated in copper nicker nick nickel nickel silver and finally 24 karat gold so they put every single <laughs> metal metal in this thing okay and the core is made of cork of course you have to cork the center or else it just doesn't make any sense in tv news the new executive producer of doctor who chris chinnable who is the executive producer of the bbc's broad church entering its final season this later this month He's mm-hmm. taken over Doctor Who from Stephen Motif, who uh, has done Doctor Who since its inception, the relaunch, back uh, eight years ago now, I think, or nine at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's also the co-creator and plays um, Minecraft on Sherlock. So if you want to put a face with the name. But he oh, is he is finally okay. stepping down from Doctor Who, and Doctor Who is going in a completely different direction, they're saying, after the Christmas episode here coming up in uh 2018 when the current doctor will be replaced which one will guess with a new sexy young doctor now that they've finally gotten the old man out of the way yeah um i mean i i I understand it i think doctor who's in a weird place because it is a show that's so geared towards a small tight-knit community but with the resurgence of doctor who and having sexy david tennant and the sexy to some matt smith um (laughs) I mean, he's he is not he is not naturally. Him. Yes, but those two are not classically handsome. I mean, I guess Eccleston isn't either. Regardless, the point is, um, they want to try and broaden their their audience, but that is tricky to do with a show that's so specific. Like, I th- I don't know anything they do that would draw, say, Joe in. Well, Joe, a ner- a nerd who also just doesn't care about Doctor Who. Well, one of the things they're going to try and do is like Broadchurch that is a season-long storyline they said that the new episodes of doctor who will have a season-long storyline mystery that an overall arcing big bad per season now if you will that's every season really of doctor who since all of the new ones have had uh for the most part have had a season-long if not a multi-season arc yeah you that's the thing joe's you'd actually i think you'd actually enjoy some of the elements like particular doctors each of their runs they have stories like three three year long stories Mm -hmm. so this is that doesn't sound new to me at all that was just one of the things that they talked about with him coming in and some of the stuff that they were going to change up my whole big thing with doctor who has always been the production value on it people want to act like it's that it's acting like it's this great innovative show when in all honesty the production value to me is on par with what i saw with buffy and angel 15 years prior now at this point no no Mm. not anymore not anymore 
Those robots. And, the only time, and I honestly, the only time they do that is when they specifically do that for characters like the Cybermen, who that's kind of like their their uh, what's the term? Design. It's kind of their they're like not their cliche, but they're a calling card almost. Which I guess you can't really use that as an excuse, but I think that's their excuse. I just like the fact that now their calling card is to look crappy, I guess, or to look only for down. specific for specific villains that have been around long enough that they kind of leave them as is. Mm-hmm. That would have been before the relaunch, I guess. These villains were correct. Okay, maybe I'm sure I'll get around to Doctor Who at one, eventually, but it has to have an ending to to a certain extent, or else I just will not be able to get back in. I will not be able to get into it. Then you will yeah. not get into it, sir. I mean, no. I mean, yeah, that's the thing. It's why I left off The Walking Dead. It's why I refused to start Game of Thrones for a while because I didn't know if they had an ending. So uh, I, I'm just a firm believer in all shows. And it's why we're three seasons behind on Supernatural, Sam. It's because now I'm Are scared. Are three that, seasons behind? Yeah, the last season we watched was 10. I'm only two then. Well, well you're, you're the one that left me, Joe. <laughs> in more ways than one. Yep. Speaking of people what? that left... Uh, I moved away. Speaking of people that left... Went the uh, other way. <laughs> I left you behind on Supernatural. I left you behind oh, okay. with living situations. I, we don't need to air our personal business here. I never liked you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking I'm of, actually moving in your old room, Joe. Oh, beautiful. Speaking of people who, uh, le- who are leaving things, um, Junkie XL, uh, who left the Justice League score, is now being replaced with Danny Elfman to compose the entire score for Justice League. The last time he composed for Batman would have been Batman Returns, and the last um, superhero movie he composed would have been Spider-Man 3 in 2007. He's also composed other, though, like he's done Hell... He did both Hellboys, he did Hulk from 2003, and he did additional music. So this is a Joss Whedon thing. He did additional music, but not the main composing for Age of Ultron. When I hear Danny Elfman's name, I think a very specific style. You think Bart? Yeah. Yeah, and I don't want that for Justice League. Like I don't want that. Bum bum Like I don't want that. It's the Justice League. Oh, Superman, you're alive. But um, but um, bum but up but up. Yeah, like it doesn't. It might be stretching it a little. Look at how much fun we're having. Aren't we all having fun? <laughs> now that we're all together, we can have fun together. It's it's a too show toony. Like Men in Black even was another one he did. And it's just like it worked for Men in Black, that opening scene where you're following the dragonfly through the through the cornfield because that works with that. But Yeah, it's it's a lot of it's a lot of that like walking tuba line where it's like boom 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 I fear that boom 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 this we're going down a slippery road where just everything might get a little too bright and shiny and optimistic <laughs> like to the point where they'll be like oh we're not actually fighting dark side we're fighting his little brother bright side and he wants to fill the world with cheer mr bright side played played by the killer danny played by danny elfman <laughs> <laughs> he recomposes it for the film speaking of bright sides and uh, Gotham's brightest night. As we reported last week, Adam West passed away, but you can still see his last two, um, you know, I guess, portrayals in the DC universe. Powerless, which we had mentioned previously on the show, um, got canceled before they were able to air an unaired episode featuring Adam West. NBC and DC has now released that episode online, and he he, he looked like he was towards the end in this episode. Yeah. He, he doesn't move a lot. He's still there. But his voice is as strong as ever, and that's a good sign because his other completed project that we'll get later on this year is the Batman vs. Two-Face, a animated sequel to The Return of the Cape Crusaders where they will actually show you the unaired episode featuring Two-Face, who was never allowed in the 1966 TV series. So For being too, too scary? Yeah, for being too grotesque for uh, television back then. They're getting hmm. William Shatner. We've talked about this, too, I think, already on the show. They got William Shatner to voice Two-Face for the episode. So I, nice. I'm intrigued by that. I did like the original six issues of the 66 comic book series. So I'm intrigued mm-hmm. to see. I should watch Return of the Cape Crusader. I'm intrigued to see what they do with it. But if you need to get your Adam West fixed, these are two ways to do it. Um, spoiler alert, though, the Powerless episode is rough to get through. But he's in more of it than you think. He's in at least three scenes. So Great okay. news. Yes, very great news. But if that doesn't do it for you, our final headline of the week it is now being promoted finally this week, which is where it came to my attention. And I want to kind of tangent off into a little discussion here about this. Hulu is now offering live TV. So for $40 a month, you can now buy similar to Sling or other 
your own type of cable package attached on to your Hulu programming. So forty dollars gets you all the like non-commercial Hulu stuff and your library, all your Hulu library that you know and love. But now you also get a plethora of mm-hmm. other channels, um, such as like you get your regional Foxes, you'll get FS1, you get your Fox Movie Channel, you get your ABCs, your ESPNs, your USA Networks, Telemundo. So all the major companies have built into this. And I want to lead this into almost a bigger discussion. I was doing the math. And I think if I ever actually buy a quote unquote cable package, I could get Netflix, this and HBO for $70 a month. Is that worth it in today's world now for like a cheaper version of cable? Or is it kind of the same price? And we've just swapped it out almost now to a certain extent. Uh, you, I would say the only thing that I would say for that, that we may have swapped it a bit like that's what it could eventually evolve into but it's that you get to choose what it is you add onto that package like if you didn't want netflix yeah. you could take it out and save yourself 12 dollars or how much ever True. it costs now is that you and also your con your contract is month to month oh that's another beautiful thing yeah so if you're like hula, hula man this this just sucks nothing's coming out but i did hear that you're getting the full release of seinfeld or whatever in the summer i'll hop back on in summer but i still have netflix and i still have this that's i think that's a convenience that's worth the money. Yeah, because one of the things yeah. that I was always worried about and I was having trouble in April was finding the NHL playoffs because I don't have cable anymore here. So I was constantly trying to find NBC Sports Network. I could essentially log back on, start paying for Hulu for a month so I could get li- or this Hulu Live stuff so I get live streaming TV with that and then cancel it again and then pick it back up next year or keep it for the World Cup when that stuff comes around and it's going to be on the Fox channels. So, I, you know, that's a great point, Sam. I didn't even think about that. You're welcome, Joe. That's what I'm here for. Great points. <laughs> Speaking of other great points and debates, we'll be getting into shark attacks in just a bit. But next, piracy and internet coalitions. Where's the line and what should we cross? Hold on now. Yep, getting there. Almost got it. Oh yeah! Three Wise Radio. Earlier this week, 30 content creators and entertainment companies announced that they have teamed up to fight piracy. The coalition, called ACE, Alliance for Creative and Entertainment, includes the likes of Amazon, HBO, Netflix, and 20th Century Fox. The goal, according to ACE's press release, is to build an ongoing effort to curtail piracy in the uh, regard that the group will utilize its members' expertise, as well as that of the Motion Picture Association of America, and they will kind of work together to control what is available to the public and at what time. A lot of this has to do with piracy sites raking in a whopping 21.4 billion visits, and there's also been some high-profile leaks as of late, like how a hacker stole the latest season of Orange is the New Black and held it for ransom, releasing most of the episodes online before they could even get to it. There's also the uh, HBO, got Game of Thrones got released, I think the first six episodes prior to uh, their release or something like that, or four or whatever, a few years back as well. Disney also was upset when the latest installment of Pirates of the Caribbean was released a little bit before it was held into theaters. Now, I get where everyone's coming from on this. And there's another story attached to this here that we'll get to in a second. But it's more along the lines of you're trying to control, I guess, the theater that you see it in. You're trying to control ways for people to not to, to have to pay to see your content. But at what point do you cross the line and say, well, the Internet is free we, we should be able to do whatever we want. You know, if someone gets their hands on it, where do the laws come in? Where do you guys stand on this? I mean, let's let's just for the sake of legal standards say that none of us have ever stolen anything slash probably have. Um, I mean, in terms of this, I think it's a gray area. And it's also interesting that it is a topic for discussion. Like, oh, is this legal? Is it like it's clearly illegal? Yes. Yeah. It's 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 cut and dry that like it's the wrong thing to do. It's not it's not right. Um, and honestly, the things probably shouldn't. There's just it's so hard to crack down on. It's almost as if the impetus is on the movie companies and things like that, the distribution companies, I suppose, to find a way to make it work and make it more accessible. And I think that. Yeah. Like putting more stuff on Netflix and putting stuff more on this downloadable stuff has actually helped with that, although it's really hard tangibly to see. Um, but I will agree with you, Joe, that a lot of the times what I at least try to do when I'm not watching videos that we have such easy access to is I will buy them. I will just buy what I can from the company, whether it be 
poster soundtrack like last one i i watched logan on a stream or a stream that my that my buddy had i watched that and then the next day i went out and i bought the dvd or right the, well blu-ray so that's as best as i can do to try and feel good about it but it's just it's interesting to see that you can be so distanced from it that you really have no remorse for it you know yeah you know, you're absolutely right and it's weird because yeah. well, i mean Gary, like what's your take on it i mean a lot, a lot along the ways of of what Sam was saying, but I mean, like, this is kind of something that you can't really police unless, so because the internet is so free and, like, you have full access on everything. Like, th- this happens, like, people are going to get into stuff. If they want to get into it, they're going to get into it. It happens with with movies and TV and radio and stuff. It happens with, it happens with the government. Like, you know, pe- if people want to get in, they're going to find a way to get in. Also, earlier this week, Europe's the European Union, to a certain extent, has told specifically Dutch internet service providers that they must block access to the Pirate Bay, which is one of the biggest piracy uh, sites and torrent sites um, online. And even though the founders have not been a part of this and they've gone through their own court trials and I'm pretty sure they've had to pay their own money and they, mm-hmm. in other words, justice has been served in that original founders who, who created this. Do you have rights by, by to tell your internet service providers to say, hey, don't allow access to said sites or is it because this is almost sort of to that, what is it, the black internet that it used to be around or whatever, the underground internet where it was a back, dark web dark web that was a back yeah. way. You know, is is it more like that where you should block stuff like that? Where does that come in or are we getting too much into the net neutrality net new neut- help me out. I'm just going to keep neutrality. Yes, thank you. Net neutrality standpoint of the freedom to be able to do whatever you want on the internet. Uh Man, the, the thing is, is it's really, especially in these particular things with downloading, and it's the reason that you can't crack down on it. It's the reason we all feel so good about it is that it's a hydra. <laughs> you can't, you shut down Pirate Bay, and then you'll get not only two new websites, but you'll also get another website that's called like Pirates Bay that'll be the same thing. Like it's, it's too easy to generate those sites and keep them functional. Like these people, yeah. these people who download this or who, who like, run these these sites are very good at what they do they also do it for free because there is no form of them actually accepting money other than i think maybe through like a google ad analytics or whatever that they have to because they're not selling advertisement on their sites they're, no one's yeah. paying them money to do this so they're doing this a lot pro bono I mean, and the thing is, is I believe once you have to, for maintenance, I'm not sure on it, but for me, I don't think there's that much maintenance in these sites as much as it is you just set it up so that you're going through the legal channels of, oh, well, technically we're not we're a downloading third party. content yeah, yeah. because we're sharing it or whatever. Um, once you get that done, it's sort of self-sustaining. Yeah, which is, yeah. Which especially is, yeah. with a huge user base. I will admit, though, I do like the coalition idea because we, we've we seen a huge drop off in downloading of music in the last five years with Spotify and the availability to pay a premium and then to a certain extent choose what it is you want to hear and set up your own playlist. Mm-hmm. And it's become more of a self-sustaining subscription service, almost better than Internet radio ever was. Yeah. yeah. I have no reason. I have no issue with the company, with the specific, like a specific company saying, okay, we're not allowing our internet users to go on to Pirate Bay. That conceptually I'm fine with. It's just that that then limits your freedom, like you said, and then it becomes subjective as to what counts as appropriate behavior or websites or appropriate behavior. So that, that could be a spiraling, a spiraling slope. Um, and that can get too messy. So as soon as you make something subjective, it it becomes problematic, and that's what that would yeah. be doing. I mean, yes, and, yeah. and this has been a problem for years. You, you've had people used to steal cable in the 80s. You know, you'd move into a house, and the wire was still hooked up, and people would plug in and never register, and all of a sudden they had free cable, and there used to be those commercials being like, are you stealing free cable? And all the, I, I, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty certain every comedy from the 80s, 50% of them were stealing cable. And there was a joke at one point about like, well, I'm the one that stole the cable. Yeah, there was an episode at least about it in every sitcom <laughs> or something. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I'm kind of with you. And it's what we just talked about a few minutes ago with setting up your online streaming services and everything else. I can't remember the last time. And it's how Sam, I know how you feel. You don't like to watch low quality anything just about. So I, I know that it's, to a certain extent, it's not, it's happening less and less because 
these people who are doing it are people that for some reason need it now. It's no longer because I don't have access to it because everyone's got access to a Netflix account, whether it's yours or not. And everyone has just about access to some form of television, whether you want to or not. So you all have access to go to the movie theater. And I understand movie ticket prices are insanely high to a certain extent. It should not cost you as much to go to an IMAX as it does a 3D showing of something. But yeah. entertainment to a certain is relatively affordable and easily available. So I, I do foresee to a certain extent the, this piracy thing almost mm-hmm. never going away, but not becoming as big of a problem as we've seen. Well, do you do you think that like maybe if and this is me just like suggesting this like if we had almost a a Spotify premium thing you know, obviously we have like Netflix and we have Hulu and stuff like that. But like, if we had a unlimited access to anything, but you just have to pay like a certain subscription price a month or whatever. I, that is that's sim- called Netflix. Yeah, it's similar to Netflix, but it's a little bit different when it comes to movies and and, and TV shows that are on Netflix and stuff like that. It's your paying for what is essentially the theater. You're paying for the distribution to see it. There's only one way you can see it, as opposed to television and radio, where it's these were originally designed as free services to the public, and we sell advertising airtime so we can keep the lights on. Similar to what podcasts do to a certain extent is uh, <laughs> you sell advertising airtime to keep the lights on. I think also an issue that you have is, maybe, and maybe I'm wrong, but there aren't nearly as many production companies in... Is that Would that be accurate? There aren't nearly as many production companies in music as there are in movies uh they would be more record labels and correct because most of the time a producer is self-sustaining like you you produce your own album or you produce your own film and then go to a record label for distribution right but with mo- with movies you have to cover like you have to talk to the producers you have right. to talk to distribution you have to there's so many different people that you have to go to to get approval just to get your movie on just for netflix to like get access to those movies i think it's a much more streamlined process yeah. for music yeah. and also music did have a head start with this system so oh, yeah. who knows what we could see five years down the line i would say what mu- movies getting downloaded probably started to become a big thing maybe five years after music did yeah that's maybe. about right yeah about Plus. early 2000s maybe mid 2000s I would say music has pretty well adapted to the system with the with the download. I know a lot of artists would would tell you that that's not the case and that they're not making any money, which I I, I mean I could see how smaller artists aren't making any money. Again, it's all so it's all so complicated. There's there's clearly not one answer to it, but they've started to go in the right direction. I think of of solving the problem. Um, gotcha. I agree. So one hundred percent. Things may happen in the next few years. We'll see. Yeah, we'll just have to take a look at the future itself. And until then, we promise not much more political talks than that on this show. Coming up, though, what animals scare the shit out of you? And uh, how would it actually come to be that they do? Three, Three wise radio. All right, it's finally here. The thing we've all been waiting for, Mandy Moore's survival horror 47 meters down is survival horror a safe thing to say yeah i think so i i think if you're ever going to include sharks in your horror thing which you know how i feel about jaws being a horror movie that that is how you do it It is called survival horror we'll get to that we'll get to that (laughs) uh but i we've all been waiting ever since two weeks ago when we saw the poster and found out that this movie was actually happening at the theaters so i just wanted to touch base with everybody because like we talked about last week Sharks are one of the most popular attacking animal movies. And all you have to do is not go in the water. <laughs> why Why do people keep coming to shark movies? What's the appeal? And is it appealing to you guys? It's not appealing Especially to me. Because, um, but Garrett may have a different opinion. No, I was going to say it's not appealing to me. Like, a bigger thing, but especially when... You know, with Jaws, it was like, because the shark's coming in too, too close to the, the beach. You know, like, it's... Sharks aren't really like that big of a threat for people that aren't that are, that are t- near the water, and like statistically, I I think they're kind of on the lower end of like animal attacks. So you're actually you're more likely to I believe you're more likely to be struck by lightning than to be attacked by a shark. Yeah, yeah. Statistically, I personally like shark movies. <laughs> I mean, I love um, them, but like I don't I, know the I don't know what the appeal is behind it. If so. if I were gonna get deep. I would say that because sharks sharks are one of the few creatures that have been around since the age of dinosaurs, if you mm-hmm. believe in dinosaurs. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
you know they're not real. Um, but they have one of the few creatures that have lasted that long, so I would say it's almost a very primal creature. It's almost mm-hmm. like the battle with nature personified. I think that's a little crap. They're just big, dying death machines that are scary, so... It's also the idea of I'm trying to remember what the uh, what the phobia is, but it's the fear of like dark water. It's sure. uh, so it's thassalophobia, which is like the fear of open water, and then it's like megathassalophobia, which is the fear of uh, like large creatures in open water. Me- mega thassalophobia. Th- yeah, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Thalassophobia was already a big enough word, so they're like, fuck it, just throw mega in front of it. There's actually a really fantastic um, subreddit about that, and it's. It's very intimidating. It's very, it's very scary. It's very intimidating. So there is, it's very intimidating. So it, it is, a, it is just a very interesting thing because I think it's just a very natural, like primal fear, um, just because mm-hmm. you lose more control as soon as you're in the water. You have less control than you had when you were on land. It's, I think it's very similar to space in that way. Um, L- my problem with yeah. shark movies is that they, I find them boring. The shark attack itself is usually around two to three minutes long. And somehow we have to build at least an hour and a half of lead up time. And all we have is the character who fell in the water to care about or whoever's trying to rescue him. Like at least in like Jason or Freddie or Mike Myers, you, you, you get a little bit of background on them. So you're curious at who this villain is here. You like, no, this is just an animal that's either trying to protect itself or hungry. So there's a lot of boringness to me there. There's nothing to keep me intrigued. That's why usually, (laughs) this is what I was going to talk about, usually the worst shark movies and also the most common element of shark movies is that we started it. Almost all shark movies that are made, especially the lower the budget gets, the more likely it's a thing where, oh, they're genetically mutated or, oh, we were breeding them for an army or something (laughs) along those lines. Um, We were trying to make a Sharknado. They spent tens of millions of dollars making a movie about breeding raptors to attack. Touché. So this makes sense. Uh, so I think that that's, that's part of the gripping element. I, I don't know. It's just something about jumping in the water and, and having that fear. But what I did want to go through is go through some of the shark movies. We're not going to go through some of the ridiculous ones. We'll cover all the ridiculous ones in one fell swoop because that is just budgetarily really easy to do. So we're not going to get on that. But I just wanted to start with, of course, The King Jaws. Joe, yeah. you don't like this movie. No. Or you like this movie, but you don't think it's a horror movie, which is hogwash. I, I, what is your what is your complaint with it not being a horror movie? I don't feel that horrific element. I see it more as an adventure movie. I don't see this. I wouldn't say if you went on a jungle safari and a lion was around you that that's a horror movie. So I don't understand why the atmosphere changes when it's in the water and it becomes a shark. I would say that if a, if you're like I would say that if they made a movie where that's going on, I would say that is a, a horror movie. If you're like in the jungle and it became a ha- like an animal coming after you, I would say that is a horror movie. P- possibly, like I said, I, it goes back to what we talked about a couple weeks ago, or even last week, I think. Um, the the week. horror movie elements of the old Universal movies of getting that character feel and having it question about something on yourself on the inside. That to me is the true essence of horror, or not not the jump scare, which when you get to a shark attack movie or a, an animal movie where they're the villain or they're the horrific creature, that's all you have is just the jump well, scare. Think, then you would almost argue that could you would you agree that hor- that um, shark movies you would qualify as really bad slasher films? Oh yeah, all right, I'll give you that then. Sure. Okay. I can, all right. I, can I mean, I, I would. You would all. You could also argue that Michael Myers in his original incantations didn't really have much to him. Uh, not to him, but you at least had the psychiatrist who was giving you insight into him. So we were curious well, at just, peeling back the layers. Just think of a psychiatrist talking about sharks. I mean, that's well, another. That's a movie that's entertaining obviously, for another reason. He's way out of his field, but. <laughs> You could just be a fan. I would be a fan okay. of that movie. I don't know if I consider it horror, though. But you like Jaws yes. as a movie. Yes. Okay. I, I also do, personally. And that ride at Universal yeah. Studios is fantastic. Oh, yeah. It's really... <laughs> For that is not a horror purposes. ride. No. <laughs> That's an adventure ride. Um, but also, f- fun note, Jaws, smallest shark in all of the shark movies uh-huh. that have now that have come out since best profit i believe it yep i believe it by far well, it's, it's the original it's summer blockbuster people like, say yes correct yeah i mean like, it's like wasn't the whole big thing behind jaws was like this is a huge shark you know obviously like production value like or production quality is like yeah we can't like make this huge but and then so as as production quality and and budgets have increased or decreased however you want to see it um they 
they saw that as like this is where this is the benchmark where we start out. Let's get better than that. And I think shark. it wasn't even in the original Jaws. It wasn't even like oh, this, we've never seen something this big. It's just a big shark. It's not like oh, this shark is genetically. We were dumping genetic carp into the water, and it got bigger. Like there was no like, there's no like thing like that. It was just this shark is in this place for him, right place, right time, because it was a feeding yeah. frenzy. Yeah, Fourth uh, of July weekend or something like that. So yeah, they didn't really do anything special with that. I believe he was uh, supposed to be 26 feet long, 25 feet long in Jaws, and then we move on to we actually get kind of a reprieve from shark movie besides the sequels of Jaws, which we which we won't really go into. For uh, for all of our sake, uh, we get my favorite, my favorite one. Can anybody guess? 1999. It better be Deep Blue Sea. Oh. You damn right, it's Deep Blue Sea. Which again, we were messing with those sharks. Yeah, that we made them as smart as humans. But see, and that's why that's a fun horror movie. Uh, no, not a, a gimmick. Movie, yeah, like there, there's a reason on why you were messing with them, and you can you can kind of figure that out and you're trapped in a certain area with them as opposed to it's like you said it's the open sea i hope the one i hate the most is on your list because i'll tear that one apart we'll get to it okay we'll see i would i would also argue that this one is is a i would argue with you that this this feels like an action movie because i think it was one of the last big 90s movies from 1999 to like have that very 90s action adventure movie feel to it but with sharks it's definitely one of the last movies to have that 90s feel to it that's for sure where it's let's throw a bunch of well-named or well-named actors together like anaconda or congo like they were all coming out around (laughs) this time where it's let's have said animal big ensemble cast and then unleash hell yeah those yep. big names such as Thomas Jane, Samuel L. Jackson, My- Michael Rapaport, LL Cool J. Yeah. Those are about the biggest names on there. And Saffron Burroughs, whatever she's doing now. But, I mean, I think that's a great movie. And fun fact, the sharks were quoted as 26 feet long in that movie to one-up Jaws. Okay. Okay. I do. They did not succeed in one-upping Jaws, but that is my favorite shark movie. Coming in after that, we've got. I believe it was, and this one might be your least favorite, Joe. Barely even quantifies as a shark movie. Open Water from yep. 2003. Oh God, this is the worst movie ever, ever. You want to talk about boring? They. First off, it's don't go on the stupid cruise to, to go snorkeling, scuba diving. You don't care about these people. And at the end, they just give up. They just accept their fate and give up. But we spent two hours about with them floating in the water. You know what was more interesting? Them surviving the elements, not the shark. Like them getting sunburned. You've seen like the skin starting to like peel off and they're like dehydrated because they're all around water but can't drink. Like that was more exciting than like the five times for three seconds the shark swam by because they had an open cut like it but that was kind of that's kind of the whole point is it wasn't really about the sharks it was more about kind of the the psychology of being out there not being able to do anything right but they should have focused more on that and they did they feel like they did the sharks weren't introduced until later in the game i mean i don't like this movie personally i get conceptually i should like it but i don't because it's so boring, man. It is so boring. Garrett, have you ever seen it? Are you familiar not, with it? I have not. I'm reading up on you as you guys were talking about oh, it. Oh, yeah. It's um, just two people in the water just getting shit on by life. I think they're on their honeymoon, too. <laughs> All right. It's, yeah. I mean, it, I, it sounds no, like... No, they're not on their... Ho- it's, it's not. A couple frustrated that their hardworking lives do not allow them to spend much time together. Ah, okay. So scuba diving will fix that. Yeah. <laughs> Always. And apparently things go wrong. Conceptually, good movie. Execution-wise, not so much. But honestly, what could you do with that? I would argue that's no, a thing probably no, better no. off as a short or... Yeah. That movie probably would have been great if it was a half hour long. If it was a short film. Yeah. Like if they just made a TV series that was called like Spooky Situations? Yeah, I would watch it. I think I've watched stuff similar to that. Well, let me know what those are because that would be cool. Let's see. Next up, we've got... One of the first big ones for the shark, cheap, cheapo shark movies, we've got Mega Shark versus Giant Octopus. I have never seen any of those sci fi films where it's versus. So. Probably for the best. Yeah. We're just going to group these together. Meg- I, I've seen all of these Mega Shark <laughs> versus Giant Octopus. Giant Shark grabs an uh, airplane out of thin air. Sharknado, and my personal favorite, blending the two together, Sharktopus. I, the appeal with these is I assume that sharks are not that difficult to render through CGI. Probably not. Because they're no. such kind of like a tube shape. 
But I think this just gets to the point where we're we're going for the laughs instead of any actual fear. So I wouldn't even quantify these as horror movies whatsoever. These are gimmicks straight up. No, yeah, these are fun B movies. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, which brings us next to Shark Knight 3D. Oh God! Has anybody seen this? Because no, I have not. But I, I wanted to see Piranha 3D, and now that I, I can't see it in 3D anymore because obviously it was just when it was released, like. Have you seen Piranha 3 Double D? No, but I wanted to see that too. Like, those movies looked good. They looked fun. And I guess, this, so that's, so you would be, I guess, so you would be more appealed to this type of movie than the horror movie? Yes. It's like a funny haha, self aware, even if it's a piece of garbage. If time and effort still put into it, like, if you know what it is. And you put the time and effort into it, yes. If it's, you know it's a TV movie, so I'm not even going to try reading my lines, and I'm going to give, like, generic bad porn star read. We're like, oh, no, there's the shark. I'm going to not like the movie. But if you're really selling it, I'm going to be like, yeah, this is fun. Like, this is really cool. Joe, you delivered that like a high-end porn star. Well, thank you. Uh, let's see. So next up, I'd, I'd never seen it, so none of us have really have an opinion on that. The only one, let's see that I didn't see that actually gets some credibility because it had great reviews last year, The Shallows. I did hear that was really good with Blake Lively. Oh, there was also The Reef from 2010, but I assume nobody had seen that either. That's fair. did not. But I remember that coming out, and that apparently got really good reviews. Apparently Blake Lively's great in it. But that's that's a similar situation where it's just like a shark in its natural habitat just kind of a, the situation occurs. Yes. Is essentially yeah. what that is. Nobody was fucking with it. Blake Lively wasn't doing underwater tests <laughs> on it, anything like that, which I guess that's the better the better version for horror movies, I yeah. suppose. Psychological thriller yeah. seems to be what these are all coined as. They're not coined as horror movies. They are coined as thrillers, survivor thrillers. And we've always said that the line does blur with horror and thriller, as we've said multiple times. That it times. does. That it does. Let's see, and that brings us to this movie. Are any is anybody likely to see this movie whatsoever? No. Even if it comes out on Blu-ray, or if it comes out on like Netflix. Netflix, I'll maybe like Netflix, yeah. Like three years from now, yes. Listen, I want to say yes if it comes on Netflix, but my Netflix list is forever long, and it's taking like I'm lucky if I'm gonna get through like half of it by the end of the year. <laughs> Seriously, it's. I just don't think you have your priorities in straight. I get a panic attack when I look at how much stuff is on Netflix that I want to watch. I'm like, I don't have time for all this. Because I'm also, when I turn on something, I can't turn on something and play a game. When I'm watching something, I have to watch it. I have to devote the actual proper amount of time to it. Okay, so Sam, what was this? Oh, if this... Go ahead. If this is... Sorry, I just saw something. If this is supposed to be correct, 47 Meters Down was initially supposed to release straight to DVD last August. And then do you know what happened? No. no. The uh, the Shallows came out and did so well. Oh. That they said, okay, maybe we'll push this. Maybe we'll run this a little differently. Interesting. Well, we'll, well see. That was silly. We'll Very see. interesting. We'll see if it's actually worth the gamble then. It won't be. <laughs> <laughs> we will not be. The other people can find that out. I'm not interested in finding that out. I'd much rather watch The Shallows. But with going off of that, animal attacks specifically aquatic animal attacks i wanted to get your guys opinions on what your personal greatest animal horror movie would be if you were thrust into it yourselves basically i want you to announce what your deepest darkest fears are in the animal kingdom for everyone to know so i want to know what's your animal and what is the setting that makes it so horrifying and i will of course first go to joe so I think we all know, because I've dropped hints at what the most horrifying thing ever would be, and that is giant bugs. Like, mm. I'm talking um, King Kong-type like King Kong. giant bugs. And that's Ooh. about the setting you'd have to be, because it would have to be like in Africa or somewhere along those lines where there's a hidden jungle and just... We think we found everything there is on this earth, but maybe we haven't. And for some reason, I would be there on an excursion. Why? I don't know. I don't like excursions. So that's already a bad trip. And I happen to stumble upon it, and I will probably do exactly as I've always said I will do. I will curl up in a ball and start crying. Like, I don't like bugs up close. When you show me pictures of a bug up close, I think it is the most freakiest, disgusting thing ever. I'm fine killing small bugs. I'll kill a bug. Don't think anything of it. But when I can see the detail of it, that is disgusting. That is 
Oh God, that is that is horrific. That that is you can the see worst. all the little like. Yeah, no. It's, Clicky thingies. Exactly. And think about like pincers. the deepest, darkest places in the water that are like some of the most ferocious and like disgusting looking fish because they've had to adapt to how they've lived there. Like bugs look that way because they've had to adapt to certain things. And if they're giant, man, what else are they looking like? Like I don't, mm-mm, nope. Because we're going to die <laughs> and it won't be a fun, pleasant death either. And it will, will be a slow death. I feel like y- yours would then take place in the Amazon. That's what I there's said. already pretty big bugs in there, yeah. Yeah, no. Or Australia. I, you know what? Even if there's a bug the size of a small dog, I'm probably not touching it. I'm running away. I wouldn't touch it. Are you kidding me? <laughs> they're, they're, That's a huge bug. That's what I'm saying. They don't have they're, to be giant. There's spiders that big in Australia. I know. Yeah. Birds. Don't want it. No, stop. I can't. We're done. We're done. All right. All right. We'll, t- mm-hmm. we'll switch away. We'll switch away. Garrett, Garrett, Garrett. Do something not as scary. Okay. For I him. Mean, <laughs> I, I don't like spiders, but Joe kind of touched on that a little bit. Um, my other really big fear, I actually do, I, I am terrified of the deep sea. Um, but, you know, that kind of goes along in with what we've been talking about the rest of the segment where, you know, it's like, uh, you know, there there's deep creatures. It's, it's the fear of open water and stuff like that. I wanted to present something a little bit different rather than what's on my, what's my own personal fear about that. Um, but I would love to have a... A like a primate be the the horror like creature in this in this scenario, almost like Planet of like, the Apes. Not quite. So like, um, you know how there's like gorillas and stuff that they they have trained to like speak, no sign language and speak and stuff. They're they're getting to the point, but like this one they've they they've kind of just been almost like almost like a gorilla grod in the flash te- in the show. <laughs> like, but before he kind of like learns to talk and but without psychic powers it's like season one we're not planet of the apes because he can't talk and it's just one that's it to start yes you're right so it's more situational like you work at a zoo and one of the primates gets out of its cage and you're in the let's say you're a security guard Mm -hmm. and you're in the security guard office a little cube and this thing is just like circling around the cube trying to kill you, but also no. sign languaging that it's going to kill you. No, I'm just imagining Predator, <laughs> but with a gorilla instead of the Predator. <laughs> that Yeah, that'd be kind of... Okay. I'd watch that movie. <laughs> like, you, you get, like, you find one of your teammates and he's just like pummeled to death, broken limbs and stuff. And it's like, it's a little gruesome, but it's like, oh, this is what outlandish thing did this. What, you know, it's, you know with Predator, he, he skinned people and like hung them up in the trees and stuff. But like... This is a little more like, oh, dang, like something is systematically hunting us, but it's, you know. And it's a gorilla. And Okay, fair enough. Probably a gorilla. <laughs> fair enough. The one that I chose was specifically not so much that these animals scare me, but that I have such an innate trust and, and passion for them. It would be a Cujo scenario. I thought of that, oh, too. Yeah. Yeah. It would be a dog scenario, quite personally, if my own... So the setting that I would be in is if my own dog would turn on me. Lando, no! Lando will not turn on me because he is he is too dumb <laughs> to do that. He's actually sitting right underneath me right now. He can't speak English. Um, but that, that idea, for some reason conceptually, that idea that something something snaps and the dog goes into survival mode because how do you deal with that that element of like the affection that you have for the dog but also why why is it behaving this way and wh- how am i going to get out of this situation you almost have yeah. a rabies uh end of shane scenario or not shane, yes. um, end of old yeller scenario rabies end of old yeller yeah yeah some somewhat yeah but I'm not sure. I don't. I don't think it'd be a great movie. <laughs> it wouldn't be a great experience either. But that would be. Shorts. That would be my fear. Yeah, it would be a short. It would be like a 10 minute short, and it would just be like how to mm-hmm. how to manage in a house. I would have a much bigger, nicer house than I have, also as a to house. increase the tension. <laughs> but that would be my horror. All right. And yeah. and now we know. It's delicious. It's too delicious. Get out of here. Peaking your interest. As usual, we end every episode with what's peaking your interest, where we just say what's peaking our interest. It may be the brand new peaking your interest intro we just played. But Garrett, let's start with you. What's peaking your interest? That was a little little wonky coming through on my end, so I'm going to assume it's my turn now. Um, but peaking my interest is actually shark movies. I saw today that they are making a Sharknado 5. 
Uh, yeah, it's called. Uh, hold on, I got this. Uh, Sharknado, Sharknado, make. It's a play on make a, make America great again. I think. <laughs> make a shark great I believe- again. I'm almost positive it is, and they've also do they've come up with another one that's Tsunami, and it's a Tsunami B movie. Gotcha. Wonderful. I mean, the last one for the fourth was made the Fourth Awaken or something like that, or the Fourth Awakens. God, it's like they're not even trying with their puns. I know. I'm um, now. I'm just trying to figure out what Sharknado. So it's called Sharknado Five Global Swarming. Mm. And I'm trying to remember one of the one of the commercials or one of the taglines is "Make America Bait Again." There it is. This is money. Uh, what's piquing my interest is that two days ago we had big reports that Venom was not going to be part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And today, in a report, Amy Pascal, <clears throat> who is somebody that's linked to Venom, she's a producer, said that he was, in fact, connected to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Our good friend Kevin Feige said that he what that it wasn't. Just again to remind us that comic book movies are still kind of dumb. It's pretty fair. I, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna take Fergie's word for it, but uh, oh god, I don't want this to be a thing. When in doubt, trust the Kevster. But the only way they can do this is if he somehow in one of the Infinity Wars grabs the black suit, like. That, but, that's this, it. but the Venom movie is going to come out before Infinity War. No, it'll it's come on, out. It's on track in, to. Yeah, in it theory. In theory. Yeah. Oh. Because it's it's scheduled to come out like October, and Infinity War comes out in like November. Great. There's, there's no way they can make it work unless they push the Venom movie back. Maybe Sony's just like, we're going to keep saying it is, so hopefully people go see it, and then they don't read the reports that it's really not. But what's piquing my interest this week, because you guys don't want to ask me, um, Joe, what's speaking your interest? Tell thanks. us. Thanks, Sam. I have recently joined Bumble uh, in an attempt to reconnect with my new city and uh, find out who is <laughs> out there. Within the first... I don't think that's why people join Bumble. Yeah. Within the first 10 people... I recognized three of the first 10 people that popped up on my uh, on my phone. <laughs> and, of course, I swiped right on all three. Knowing that I'm not actually looking to hook up with any of them, I just want to be like, "This is funny." Hey, I'm back in the city. Yeah. Look who's back in town. <laughs> so now it's not that people don't see you as a man looking for a lady on Bumble, but you are in fact an old man that does not know the proper usage of apps. I know the proper use of apps. It's not. My, it's not. Not my... when you're talking to these people. Like, hey, I, I'm Joe. Remember me? I'm back in town. I did not know. It's be. It's the, I, you, it, the, the. Okay, Bumble. The ladies have to make the first move. So that's right. I, what it, I'm saying is that you are so old fashioned now, not knowing which apps to do. Is they'll say, "Oh, hey, Joe, what's up?" To which you will say, "Hey, I'm Joe. Remember me?" I will not. I'm in the town now. I will not. And you're only a year and a half younger than me, so it's not like... That is, apparently, that year and a half takes its toll. <laughs> You'll find out soon. And so, If you're looking for us, Joe, tell them to check us out on the Facebooks. Listen, you can find us on Facebook at 3 Wise Media. <laughs> you can find us on Instagram at 3 Wise Radio. And you can find us on Twitter at 3 Wise Radio as well. Our cosplayer of the month's been going up on uh, the Instagram every Friday, so make sure to check that out. We're going to have them on next week. Also, though, make sure you check out Beyond the Blast Doors, a brand new Star Wars podcast who's a friend of the show. And you check out, of course, our sister podcast, Movie Versus. There's a third podcast we want to talk about, and it's good, bad, or bad, bad. But not only can you check them out, you can hear Brian on our latest Point Five episode that recaps all of E3. Because I don't oh, play yeah. video games, they kicked me out, and Garrett and Sam did an entire podcast with just Brian. It's pretty good. I we was, thought he we thought he might have a better understanding of the technology. He does, and I'm sure there's an old man pun there somewhere. But while you guys think about that, we'll see you next week. Three Wise Radio is a production of Three Wise Media. For more information, check us out on Facebook. 